I'm Dr. Saurav Fartare. I'm a consultant uh, in critical care medicine department in the uh, Kokila Ben Dhirubhayambani Hospital. Today, my topic is uh, basics of ECMO, uh, ECMO being extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Uh, down the memory lane, uh, the first use of membrane oxygenator for a cardiopulmonary bypass was in infants in 1950. Um, in 1971, the first uh, adult ECMO was uh, successfully used in an adult patient uh, with post-traumatic uh, severe respiratory failure. I think the patient was on ECMO for three to four days and was successfully weaned off. In 1972, we had uh, pediatric successfully uh, used it in a pediatric cardiac cases in 75 neonatal cases. And in 2009, after the CESAR trial, I think the use of ECMO really flourished. You can see this is uh, one of the latest machines which we have, the cardio help, which is very user-friendly and can be used very conveniently and can be used for patients for transport as well. So talking about principles of ECMO, ECMO, uh, uh, is a form of extracorporeal life support. Uh, extracorporeal means outside the body, where an external uh, artificial circulation carries the patient's venous blood uh, uh, to a gas uh, uh, gas exchange device, which is an oxygenator, where blood gets enriched with oxygen and carbon dioxide is uh, removed from it. Then it is carried from there and it re-enters the patient's circulation. The circulatory flow is achieved using pumps, which could be centrifugal or roller pumps. Roller pumps mostly are used in cardiac wards. Uh, ECMO is mostly uh, used centrifugal pumps. But uh, the two major modalities uh, uh, are uh, veno-arterial, which is for uh, cardiac support, circulatory support, and the veno-venous, which is for the respiratory support. As you can see, different sites uh, uh, for VA ECMO cannulation. Uh, VA ECMO uh, can be uh, used peripherally or uh, centrally. Uh, for a uh, peripheral inserted, you can see uh, in figure A, femoral, uh, both the femorals are used, femoral vein, uh, the blood is drawn from the femoral vein over the uh, uh, blood pump or the membrane lung and then given it back to the patient through the femoral artery. For some patients, in as you can see in uh, Figure B, uh, uh, patients who have limb ischemia, we can use axillary uh, artery as well. Uh, we have used in one of our patients where there was limb ischemia. So basically the blood is drawn from the femoral vein, goes over the blood pump, uh, membrane lung, and then uh, it is given to the axillary artery. So uh, in this, uh, whenever you use an axillary artery, you will have to have a vascular surgeon involved. They use grafts as well. For the central uh, uh, ECMOs, basically patients who are in the cardiac OAS who cannot get off the uh, heart lung machine, uh, maybe you uh, may have to be uh, put on a central ECMO. Basically in this, the right atrium is directly cannulated and the blood is drawn from it over the blood pump and membrane lung and it is uh, basically uh, returned back to the proximal part of the ascending aorta. Veno-venous ECMOs uh, are of various types, uh, uh, various sites can be used. This is uh, 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 femoral veno-venous ECMOs. There is also something called uh, uh, some uh, femoral, ven uh, femoral jugular uh, uh, venous ECMOs, which can be used. Uh, in our institute, we use uh, uh, femoral uh, sites only as they are quicker and safer to, uh, it is quicker and safer to insert. And uh, uh, you can uh, secure the uh, cannulas uh, uh, better. Um, drawback recirculations are more common in these. Femoral jugulars are also used. Uh, the advantage is that we can achieve adequate flows and the basic disadvantage is you have to have two uh, sterile sites at the same time when we're working on these patients. Yeah. So this is the veno arterial ECMO. As you can see, blood is drawn from the vein, uh, uh, femoral vein and uh, returned back to the femoral artery. Here, uh, the difference is, uh, uh, as you can see, there is a backflow cannula. As these cannulas have huge diameter, there uh, can be limb ischemia, which can happen. That's where the backflow cannula helps it, uh, helps from preventing it. Now, coming to the components of ECMO. ECMO is divided into, uh, uh, the components are blood, uh, the blood pump, the membrane oxygenator, the uh, heat exchanger, blender, cannulas, and tubings. We'll look at them one by one. 
so we, roller pumps we'll talk about roller pumps roller pumps are basically uh, a positive displacement pumps uh, which use roller rollers as a uh, rollers along the uh, flexible tubing to provide the pumping stroke and give direction to the blood flow they can provide pulsatile as well as the non pulsatile flow the tubings uh, are basically latex uh, polyvinyl chloride and silicon rubber so uh, in these tubings wh why do we need to know about these tubings because hemolysis is maximum in uh, latex rubber after that comes the pvc and the least hemolysis in silicon rubber the flow is in a roller pump is basically uh, determined by the rpns the length of the tubing in contact with the roller the roller pumps are independent of circuit resistance and hydrostatic pressure so needless to say the advantage is that the output is ac adequate uh, is accurate as it is not dependent on the circuit resistance disadvantages of roller pumps is malocclusion miscalibration fracture of the tubing uh, uh, cavitation cavitation is basically a formation and collapse of gas bubbles uh, due to uh, uh, creation of uh, uh, pockets of low pressure uh, because of change in the mechanical force, which can be due to uh, uh, drop in the, uh, 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 it could be because of the occlusion of the inflow, uh, inflow of the pump, which could be because of uh, decreased circulatory volume or uh, venous cannula getting obstructed. The spallation is also one of the uh, uh, disadvantages of roller pump. What is spallation? Basically, release of plastic microparticles from the inner wall of the tubing which is basically uh, basically the result of roller pump compression. Now coming to centrifugal pumps, these are non-occlusive pumps, okay, which operate on the principle of blood entering the pump by vortexing action of spinning impeller blades or rotating cones. Impeller cones are magnetically uh, coupled with an electrical motor, okay, and when rotated rapidly, generate pressure differential, which causes the blood to move ahead. Uh, it is basically centrifugal pumps are dependent on RPMs, uh, RPM preload and afterload. So basically, if there is increase in the afterload, there will be decrease in the flow. Decrease in the afterload, there will be increase in the flow. Vice versa, if there is increase in the preload, there will be uh, increase in the flow. And uh, uh, decrease in the uh, uh, preload, decrease in the flow. There are less chances of uh, 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 cavitation in centrifugal pumps. Now talking about membrane oxygenator. ECMO circuits have gas exchange devices called as oxygenator to add oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide from the blood. Uh, earlier, uh, uh, silicon membrane oxygenators were used, which currently are replaced by hollow fiber polymethyl pentane. They are extremely efficient at gas exchange and demonstrate minimal plasma leak. There is low resistance to the blood flow. Uh, oxygen exchange depends on type of membrane and diffusion uh, characteristics, thickness of blood, surface area of the membrane, and the rate of blood flow. CO2 removal depends on difference uh, in the uh, carbon dioxide concentration between blood and gas, size of the membrane, fresh gas flow, blood flow rates. Lastly, heat exchanger is, an inbuilt, uh, is inbuilt within the oxygenator, used to regulate temperature of the extracorporeal blood. So we can uh, warm the patient or cool the patient accordingly for patients with ECPR. You can see different types of membrane oxygenators of different ECMO machines. You can see in this part. This is how a cardio help uh, membrane oxygenator looks like. This is the heat exchanger in an ECMO circuit. This is the blender, which can give us uh, uh, FiO2s from room air 21% to 100%. Sweep gas flow can be achieved. I'm talking about cannulas. Cannulas, uh, inflow cannulas and outflow cannulas, the bicribal or the dual cannulas. We'll talk about venous cannulas before. So the venous inflow cannulas are longer than the outflow cannulas as they have to reach from common femoral vein to the right atrium. Uh, larger diameter, uh, the larger di they are la the inflow cannulas have larger diameter than the outflow cannulas. They are they have multi perforated uh, uh, sites uh, which reduces the pressure drop and chattering to avoid collapse of the wall of, uh, of the wall of the right atrium or the IVC, which decreases the pressure drops and increase the drainage of flow while maintaining the preload and the arc. Uh, during pulmonary uh, support, inflow uh, uh, is at the IVC and the distal tip is at the subhepatic vein. 
well in the outflow via the jugular uh, 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 is basically into the SVC and the distal tip of the RA. For femoral femoral inflow uh, uh, is from the left femoral vein at the level of subhepatic vein, while the distal tip uh, of the outflow is at the RA, which can prevent recirculation. For femoral femoral, we have to be really watchful for recirculation because the chances of recirculation are very much high in femoral femoral as compared to femoral jugular. This is how a femoral cannula looks like. Uh, you can see there are uh, multiple perforated uh, thing, uh, perforated lumens uh, at the uh, white end of it with the wire reinforced tubing. Arterial cannulas, well, they are smaller than the venous ones, both in terms of length and diameter. They are small perforation at their distal tip, not as extensive as the venous cannula. As we uh, saw in the earlier picture, we more distal perfusion cannula has to be inserted to avoid limb ischemia. Tubings are regular and heparin coated for uh, patients who have thrombocytopenia. We can use heparin coated tubings as well. This is how our arterial cannula looks like, wire reinforced with not so many perfor uh, perforations. Now coming to indications uh, uh, of ECMO, they can be further classified into the indications for VV and as VA. I flubbed them together. The first part uh, is for uh, uh, the VV, the first five, and the last five is for the VA. Pneumonias, ARDS, traumatic lung uh, injury, near drowning, support after lung transplantation, myocardial infarction, ECPR in hospital cardiac arrest, refracted to other managements. In foreign countries, I think in Paris, they use ECPR uh, uh, outside hospital as well. For massive pulmonary embolism, for drug overdose, uh, because of various cardiodepressant drugs, also can uh, be put on uh, ECMOs. Uh, some patients after cardiac surgery who are not able to wean off the uh, bypass machine can be put on ECMO as well. Contraindications, there are a lot of contraindications, basically unrecoverable heart, not a candidate for transplant or destination therapy for VAD, ventricular assist device support, disseminated malignancies, severe brain injury, prolonged CPR, severe AR, severe chronic organ dysfunction like emphysema, cirrhosis, and a patient has psychiatric illness, uh, uh, relative contraindications will be peripheral vascular disease for VA most. Now, uh, coming to the complications, uh, obviously complications could be because of the uh, cannulation itself. Uh, at the site of cannulation, there could be bleeding, hematoma formation, uh, thromboembolism, cannulation related, uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. They have a uh, von Willebrand factor deficiency when they are on ECMO. Uh, there could be uh, various uh, 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 Complication which are VV VB ECMO specific or VA ECMO specific, neurological, as we know, bleeding could be one of it. This is how a membrane oxygenator looks like with clots in it. Veno venous, as you know, uh, can lead to recirculation. As you can see, uh, the cannula in the first picture, femoral femoral, should be above the renal vein, not at the renal vein. So that would lead to uh, recirculation. In the same way, the femoral jugular, the first, uh, you can see it's too close. The cannulas are too close. So we should avoid them by spacing them out. Ideally, they should be cannulated uh, 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 using fluoroscopy or uh, using an uh, echo machine. Uh, for a uh, uh, peripheral VA ECMO, mixing zone is uh, something uh, we should know about because this one of the complicated. I would not say it's a complication, but uh, it's known to happen in these patients. Uh, as uh, you know, uh, there is a mixing zone or a mixing cloud which is present uh, for patients who are on VA ECMO. Uh, most probably it is located uh, uh, in between the ascending aorta and the renal arteries. As the native heart improves, but the lungs are not improving, uh, the mixing zone can go up. Uh, uh, so flow from the first branch of the aort uh, aortic arch splits into the uh, carotid and the subclavian. So there will be deoxygenated blood supplied to the uh, uh, brain and upper lens. So the, uh, uh, this uh, syndrome is called as the North-South syndrome and the Hurricane syndrome, which we'll be talking later on in the topics which are to come. I see bleed uh, in one of the patients as the patient is on uh, uh, anticoagulants when we are using uh, uh, VA ECMOs, especially uh, we require anticoagulation 
in these patients, uh, they can develop IC bleeds as well. For VA ECMOs, uh, the uh, 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 anticoagulations can be modified, but for a VA ECMO, we need anticoagulation. ECMOs, this is how an ECMO looks like. Um, uh, it's very, uh, uh, as compared to the previous ECMO, is quite portable. Uh, uh, it doesn't occupy that much of space. You can take these patients for imaging in your uh, hospital as well as uh, if you, uh, there are outreach programs. I think uh, UK has a lot of outreach programs where basically the patients are uh, in the periphery where the hospitals don't have an ECMO. Uh, 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 capable unit. So the, these ECMO units go there, cannulate ECMOs and get them, as you can see in the ambulances. So it's uh, pretty much there in the foreign countries, but India is not yet developed. That's about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.